If you want to hear about how one dark story point is hidden in the background of this movie, then stick around to the end of this video. Welcome back to Things You Missed. Today I'll be covering one of my favorite psychological horror films that kind of flew under the radar because of the sheer volume of great horror movies that came out in 2016. I'm talking about The Boy. This is one of those movies that can be fun to look back on because it's only after learning of the twist that some of the things you missed start to make sense. So as usual with these types of movies, I'll urge you to make sure that you've seen the movie before hearing me analyze it. So with that in mind, let's get into The Things You Missed. When Greta arrives at the house for the first time, she's still asleep in the car, and the driver, after bringing in her stuff, has to wake her up. Apologies, miss. I didn't know I was to wake you. This first interaction that she has is symbolic of the time she would spend there, most of which is her being frightened by the man on the other side of the mirror. She finds that the house is seemingly empty until she meets the grocery delivery man, Malcolm, and he shows her around the kitchen. The crates that he uses to deliver the food are from Broadhurst Farm Grocers. Broadhurst is one of the many examples of the initials BH, which come up again and again in this story. The boy she is hired to look after, Brom's Hillshire, has the initials BH. The letters are carved into the rat traps set up around the house, and the book that Greta later reads aloud to Brahms has a character named Mr. Brocklehurst, BH. More on that later. She meets the family and they explain the rules, like how she is to play music at an uncomfortably loud volume, most likely so that the real Brahms can have some time to move freely, possibly to exercise. She is also to clear out the rat traps daily, because Mrs. Hillshire is afraid of the rodents getting into the walls where he's living. It also gives a plausible reason as to why she is to discard any uneaten food in the sealed chest. It gives Brahms the opportunity to feast on her leftovers. Our son is here. He's very much with us. Well, at least he gets points for honesty. I also find it interesting that he tells her this stuff while they're outside, because the rooms inside all seem to be connected by these tubes, which carry the sound. That was it. Which I suppose is all the answer we'll ever get. This system is perfect for Brahms to keep tabs on her. He can listen in on her and make sure that she's following the rules no matter where he is in the house, while also making noises to try to convince her that the spirit of Brahms is present in the house. To cover this up, the Hillshires have added a rule that she can't have any guests over, and only Malcolm can come in to make the deliveries. This way, she never becomes aware of the way that the sound carries because, for the most part, she's the only one making any sounds. If you were wondering if the Hillshires are in on it, or if they too were being fooled by Brahms, consider this. Before they leave, they take a moment alone, which I'm guessing was for a final face-to-face -face with the real Brahms. Could you give us a moment alone to speak to Brahms privately? Sure. I'll crank up the volume right here where you can actually hear Brahms's voice. Brahms. You can't make out what he's saying, but you can tell that it isn't Mr. or Mrs. Hillshire. He wants you, Miss Evans. He's chosen you, if you'll have him. The backstory that we later learn tells us that Brahms used to play with a young girl named Emily, but one day she was found killed in the woods. It was most likely Brahms, who had always had some issues. So the Heelshires started a fire and faked their son's death to avoid the consequences. They let him hide for years inside the walls until they couldn't do it anymore. That's why they pretend that they're going on holiday, where they really just end up offing themselves out of the guilt for what they allowed Brahms to become. They also seem nervous as they're leaving, probably because Brahms has become too powerful, and they don't know if their vacation cover story is going to hold up. I think Brahms agrees grave marker is another clue. It says, he shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Though I'm not sure why they would leave a clue to the secret that they're trying to keep. I'm so sorry. Come along, my dear. It's time we left. Guess they just wanted a little inside joke between the two of them. The penultimate rule is Brahms is never to leave, because looking back on it, the illusion that the doll is possessed would never hold up in the outside world. It only works because the real Brahms is able to emerge from inside the walls while Greta isn't looking. So all of these tactics are enough to plant the subconscious seed in Greta's mind that Brahms could really be alive. In her first dream scene, the shot begins with us looking through a mirror, and it is through the mirror where Brahms would eventually reveal himself. There are many shots like this that seem to be coming from Brahms' point of view, whether he's stealing her her stuff while she's in the shower, spying on her through a keyhole or otherwise. The dream ends with a hand reaching out through the wall to attack her, so perhaps some subconscious part of her suspected the truth as a possibility. After things start to get weird around the house, Greta gives in and starts following the routine that the Heelshires have laid out for her, which includes reading aloud to the doll every day. She reads a selection from Jane Eyre, a 19th century British novel. There are a ton of parallels between the story of Jane Eyre and Greta's story in The Boy, but the most notable part is when Jane becomes a 
governess, which is essentially the role that Greta is filling at the house, and meets a man named Rochester. One evening, Jane discovers that Rochester had been set on fire in his sleep, and it turns out to be a madwoman in the attic who was responsible. Jane saves Rochester's life just as Greta goes back to save Malcolm from Brahms and the boy. If you've ever read Jane Eyre, I'm sure you can find other parallels as well, but I'm gonna move on to the dark truth behind Brahms' intentions in the movie. In a Q&A with the screenwriter, Stacey Muneer, he reveals that Greta wasn't brought in to be either a girlfriend or a mother figure to Brahms, but rather a messed up in-between of the two. We get a pretty good idea of this when they discover the real room with the makeshift sack doll wearing her dress on the bed. But what you may not have noticed is the used tissues. I'll let you draw your own conclusion with that. The doll also has a head full of hair. It's possible that at least some of it is her real hair, because we see her notice a chopped portion upon getting out of the shower earlier in the film. The arms are covered in what seems to be refrigerator letter magnets, maybe the director's clue about the in-between status that Manir was talking about. That brings us to the last rule, kiss goodnight. I can only imagine, given everything that's been presented, that Brahms did not plan on stopping at the kiss. It certainly gives new meaning to this line. Well, we've had a number of potential nannies come through already, and Brahms has rejected them all, though they weren't nearly as young or as pretty as you. It was also hinted at that Brahms exhibited a sort of sadistic behavior as a child. Many rumors in town seem to think he was responsible for crushing the young girl Emily's skull, and that does seem possible after seeing the superhuman strength displayed during his rampage. He also has an array of animal traps and possible torture devices hanging from his ceiling. I think that means that the BH carved into the rat trap that I mentioned earlier probably does stand for Brahms, and the sadism is one of the many psychological issues that he has. Where else would he have gotten the blood used to leave the message for Greta's ex-boyfriend Cole? There are plenty of secrets hidden all over this movie, so let me know what you might have noticed in the comments. And if you love horror, don't hide behind that mirror, come out and subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week. Ring that death bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Assuming we both survive.